few weeks back, I felted a large lean-to shed roof. And I'm gonna share a few tips and tricks if you wanna do it yourself from scratch or replace an existing one and make it watertight. The first thing I've learned over the years is to avoid the cheapest felt where possible. Otherwise, it can tear like paper. I didn't show you, but a few years ago when I did a project, my dog had walked on some felt while it was laid on the grass and his paws went straight through, so I had to start again. Also, sometimes you might find that when you've put the felt on before it goes on the roof, it makes it much heavier to lift if you're not applying it in situ. Often, you'll also hear talk about leaving a 50 millimeter overhang around the ends and cut the excess off later. But if you've got a new roll, you may as well utilize that straight edge and line it up with the depth of the roof. Unroll it out to the other end, and when you're cutting, make sure the overhang is slightly longer than the depth. You could cut a straight edge with a Stanley knife here, but if you're building sheds every day, measuring every centimeter swallows up a lot of time. And because this is a large roof, the felt needed to be cut in three sections. I took the roll back to the beginning of the first one, unrolled it, and roughly copied the lengths. Before you start layering the felt, you need to make sure the overlaps allow run to drip off, not underneath. So the bottom of the slope will be the first one you need to nail on. And that's where I'm starting with the straight edge in line with the frame's depth straight edge. But before I even start clout nailing anything down, I kept it still and made roughly one foot reference marks with a hammer on the felt to indicate where the roof spars are. I knew straight away where they were because I could see where the cladding was nailed to. Also, these marks are approximate in length at the moment because we haven't worked out the overlap yet. So while it's perfectly lined up with the depth of the two sides, I nail on those reference marks because it'll also go straight through the spar. Then move on to the longest edge. Well, by the time I get to the corner, I do a blanket fold to prevent any rain seeping in and ruining the timber. Next, I go to the highest point of the shed and repeat lining it like before. Apart from, this side is propped up on a strip of timber to create more overhang, which I pulled down to match the new depth. And while knowing it's straight and it's lined up with the first side, I start nailing in the center in front of me and work my way along. Don't nail the sides yet though, as we still need to pull it back. Also, with this being good quality felt, it won't rip. Even when it's hanging off the edge while in situ, like you've seen with my DIY bike shed video a few months back although I've never tried this with cheaper felt. Because it's pulled back, I could then place my middle section there, overlap the upper piece again, and work out an even distance for the bottom two pieces. Again, also making sure all overhangs have excess to trim down later. Then keep that still so I can mark where the overlap falls on the bottom section of felt, and then repeat marking where the top piece falls on the middle. So pull the top piece back again, and more reference marks where the shed's roof spars are. Then I can nail the top edge of the middle section. We then go back to the first one I nailed down. I'm lifting the middle up to have a peek where my very first spar lines are, and I can create new references where I need to clout the bottom of the middle section because we know our distances now. With the middle one now partially fixed, I have all my reference marks as to where the top section finishes and I run a bead of bitumen about one inch from the inside of it. But try not to apply it too thickly as I'm doing here because it can spread out later. You'll see. And then a zigzag. But when you're working with large stretches like this, either try and place it down using both hands from a center point or get a spare pair of hands to avoid the good side get in touch with bitumen. If you ever get in this pickle, scrape off the excess first, then use a scrap piece of felt, fold it in half, 
and rub together and it'll add some sprinkles on top. but next to repeat the bitumen stage for the upper section. Remember, this is the highest point of the shed's roof. Now, I'm gonna go in the center. Try to look it over from the center with both arms. And I pressed it down evenly with a piece of wood. Remember when I said don't apply it too thickly? That's where you can accidentally get it on that timber. And then you've got more on the good side, but don't worry. I've got that party trick up my sleeve for after I've clamp nailed it. And back to nailing down the rest of the overhang with more blanket folding as I go. And finally, this is where I got the knee pads out because I felt safe with the felt, but there's a lot of nails and screws on this workbench and I don't like pain. Now you could leave your felt like this but it's nice to add more detail. And I nailed some pre-stained trim on all four sides before trimming the excess with a Stanley knife. Although I didn't trim off the excess on the back because it would make it more watertight and that can't hurt. Now quickly, if you've got an apex roof, you'll probably need to felt two bits like this. So when you've got both of them on top of the shed, that's where you need to create another overlap to cover the center point. And if you wanna see that being done, I'll leave a link to my DIY summer house video below. Anyway, hopefully this has been useful for the next time you need to do your own shed or replace it. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.